Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I have got a quick impressions video for you today. That is because I have played Alvo, the closed beta, at long long last. I have finally gotten my hands on the game. I've gotten to play it for about an hour or so I played it so far, but I just wanted to give some quick thoughts on my early impressions, I suppose I should say, about the game. Before I do so, I've got disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, I am a community moderator for First Contact Entertainment. First Contact Entertainment, of course, made Firewall, Zero Hour, and some would consider Alvo uh, direct competition with Firewall. So if you think there's a conflict of interest there or whatever, that's fine. You can take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt. All I will say is that I'm going to speak honestly about my thoughts on Alvo. But if you don't want to believe that, that's that's fine right second disclaimer is that because i'm playing in a closed beta there is just a bunch of ndas uh, a lot of stuff i can't talk about so i have to be you know, very careful with what i'm saying in these early impressions so i guess the first thing maybe to say is uh, thank you first of all to steve at Merdenpole for getting me into the beta and letting me try out his game secondly if you're just going to ask me right off the bat is alvo good based on what i've played i would say yes game obviously we've been following on this channel for quite some time it has had a very rocky development gone through cancellation it's been brought back from the dead so i definitely had a lot of concerns for elvo in terms of is this going to be you know just a disaster or is it going to be quite a lot of fun as it turns out it seems to be quite a lot of fun there is issues there is a lot of stuff that needs to be dealt with but once again early stages of a closed beta i was talking to steve himself when i was playing alvo and he was pointing out oh this thing here we know about this uh more it's gonna be fixed before launch or you know this level that you're playing right now there's things that you know this is an older version of the level that we couldn't get updated into the beta for whatever reason but when the game officially launches it's going to have the updated version and this is going to be better and this will be fixed and that will be fixed. And if everything that he said turns out to be the case, then I think Alvo is definitely something you should have on your radar. Now, another question I expect I'll get a lot is because, well, because of this channel's close ties to Firewall Zero Hour is, is this game better than Firewall Zero Hour or how does it compare to Firewall Zero Hour? And I will say the same thing basically that I've been saying, you know, just by looking at the videos of Alvo, that these two games are different things. I know they're both virtual reality first person shooters, but that's kind of where the similarities end. I've said this a lot of times, you're probably sick of me saying it. Firewall is the Rainbow Six Siege approach, very kind of slow paced, tactical, you know, one life, you're out, so maybe increase tension. Whereas Alvo is the Call of Duty arcade uh, fast pace, you're in, you're dead, you're in, you're dead. You know, it's got kill streaks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and in, if there's anything we've learned, it's that there's room for both of those kind of games on any platform. So the fact that the PSVR is getting both of these kind of games now, these kind of genres covered, I think is good. So I did have a few questions for Steve that I asked and he kindly answered on the Discord. Uh, so the first question I asked him was, there, was there going to be a difference between the PlayStation 4 Pro version of the game and the standard PlayStation version? He said that there was no Pro patch. So both versions of the game are going to be the same. The second thing I asked him was, is this closed beta going to go to open beta and then full release? Or is it going to go from this closed beta and then transition to a full release? And he told me it's going to go to a full release, so there won't be an open beta. Uh, they are expanding the slots of how many people are in the closed beta right now. I believe it's a pretty small number, but that they can expand it up to 1000. I believe that's what he's meant publicly available or that's public info on the Discord server. So about a thousand people can get in, but there won't be an open beta. And lastly, I asked him if there was going to be plans to have a party slash, you know, squad and up feature, because as it is right now, you kind of just boot up the game, hit search for the, the whatever mode you're playing right now in the closed beta, it is just free for all. Uh, so you pick that mode and then it just instantly loads you into a session and there's either players in there or if there's gaps, then it fills that, those gaps with bots. And from the reply I got from Steve, it seems that the party system is being worked on and they're hoping to have it in by launch. 
So fingers crossed that is the case, because of course these games are always fun to play with friends. Now there are plans for different modes, search and destroy, uh, custom modes and stuff like that as well, so you can have a lot of fun that way. So as I said already, I didn't play too much of the game, I played for about an hour. Uh, I was playing with Steve and some other people from my assume it was Merton Bowl. I wanted to jump straight into it, so I didn't mess around too much with the customization, uh, the weapon selection, attachments, that kind of stuff. Well, I went through the menus. Uh, but a lot of the stuff was locked. I hadn't. I had to earn the currencies or whatever to unlock the sights and all that. So I played with the AK-47, played with a handgun, uh, grenades, and I, like I pretty much just used the default loadout number one, I think it was. And it looks like you can customize up to four loadouts and put whatever you want in them loadouts so that you can quickly switch between them uh, whenever you want. Because when you die, it's actually really cool. You can just hit the square button and pick a loadout, which is again reminiscent of Call of Duty so another likeness there to Call of Duty. I want to talk a little bit about the maps I guess without saying too much. From what I saw there was four maps available in the rotation now there is variations of those like nighttime, daytime and maybe dusk as well I'm not too sure about that but I thought the maps were quite enjoyable they're quite spread out uh, at least the desert map was really kind of open and there was lots of verticality you could climb on top of buildings and there was sniping and all that kind of cool shit and then there was the monastery that felt a little bit more claustrophobic with 10 of us running around or however many people were there at the time there was the house which i think i only played it at night time and it was kind of very it was, an, it was a nice map i think maybe house so far might be uh, one i prefer the most now that's just after an hour playing with just one gun uh, so there's lots of variations and like different weapons might suit different maps better and all that kind of stuff and then of course there was the town map which was also a lot of fun that's the, i think that's the very first one they showed off uh, with that initial reveal trailer all the way back in like 2017 i think at this stage and so yeah i mean there's a lot of stuff i want to say a lot of more things i'd like to talk about but i have to be careful that i'm not violating ndas and stuff like that so these are while they're my first impressions they're not my full first impressions but hopefully as we get closer throughout the beta, uh, those ease up or, you know, when it comes to release, I'll do proper uh, impressions video then, I guess, when the game is closer to what it will be when it launches. Anyway, that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Thank you very much for watching. Before I go, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're keeping this channel going nice and moist. In particular, let me give a huge shout out to the following, Crumb, Pete Hawkins, Chopped 517, Tradition, and Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid. Thank you very much for that generosity. Really do appreciate it. If you too would like to help out on the Patreon, the link to that will be in the description below. But if you don't want to do that, you can just do the, you know, the usual likes, subscribe and comments, the usual YouTube shies. And I'd appreciate that very much as well. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all these videos. Thank you very much, Decepticon. You can find him, Decepticon.com. Link will be in the description below. And with that, I will end this video. Thanks very much for watching. Stay moist. <laughs>